Oh, Jesus. <sighs> Welcome to episode 113 of the Off and Beat podcast. I'm, again, always will be, your host, Clint Nelson. Uh, before we start today's pod, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, hit the notification bell, whatever podcast app you're using. If you want to actually subscribe to the YouTube, grow the channel, be my guest, be my guest. Put my dedication to the test. Uh, but yeah. Oh yeah, most poorly, suck some titties. Uh, re- recording this February 17th at 8.57pm Eastern. In case you need a clarification on what side of the coast I'm living. Speaking of coasting through, um... This podcast episode will be called... Full House of Lies. Full House of Lies. Or I guess you can say with the recent autopsy situation with Bob Saget, I guess you could say it's a fuller house of lies. Because I don't know if a fool can get fuller. Because if it's full, it's just full. But I think it's too serious of a story. The glass half full or is it glass half empty? Well, apparently his head was... Pretty empty, drained of blood. Which is kind of weird how apparently the autopsy reports aren't revealed. But somehow, parts of it come out and be like, uh, yeah, his head looked like it was damaged from getting hit with a baseball bat. Which, um, if the autopsies are being prevented by the Florida court system, how are we finding out this information? It's like unreleased music, but somehow I heard it. And, you know, look, the situation is a situation. I I think it's too serious to joke about. But I I, I guess I'll dive into a more interesting aspect of when it comes to these public autopsy reports. I always find it fascinating. Why are autopsies made for the public? Shouldn't the only people it should be required to know is the family or people that are involved in the situation however they may have been involved like if you're the owner of the hotel he died and like yeah i would like to know how come someone died in one of my hotel rooms some like hey were we at fault no cool uh it just you know it's uh i've always found it interesting because what is the public what is the public obligated to know right Like, does it really make a difference if he died from a heart attack or if he died just from some health issue or if he died because he tripped and hit his head on a dresser on a dresser drawer? You know, things you put your clothes in, which I don't know why they have dresser drawers for places that 90 percent of the customers are not going to be there for more than two days. I don't need six drawers to really sort my underwear like I don't even use mine at home. But why, why, why do we as a public feel like we need that we are obligated? My, like my whole thing with this thing is, why is the autopsy thing even public information? And maybe it's like one of those Freedom of Information Act type of thing where if like if the public asks for information, most things they are obligated. But it so kind of goes through a court system. And I'm not going to buy the fact that just because he's famous and a public figure. It even brings more because it seems like we only know the autopsy publicly of like famous people when they have drug overdoses and shit. Uh, I just don't I I just don't get the fascination with it. Why is this thing a big deal? Like, how dare you not tell us? It's like the family's like, hey, we don't want to tell you. The family's like, could we actually not? And everyone in the press like, no, fucking tell us. We need to know for the world. It's like, actually, the world doesn't need to know. All you need to know is he died. Mourn him the way you want. Uh, send your condolences. Not that it really means anything, but, you know, Danny Tanner. It matters to a lot of people, you know. The world needed more white fathers on TV. Um, but no, seriously, it's... The situation, like... The situation is situation. It's sad no matter how. Now, the only thing, it, I guess if like someone broke in and just started beating the fuck out of him, then, but I feel like if that happened, 
that would have been pretty evident day of the investigation. You know, it's there wasn't anyone in the room with him because as far as I know, they didn't find out till people trying to call him for hours and days and stuff, and then all of a sudden someone found him, I guess. And it's uh or he had a show and he didn't show or he just did a show. I don't remember the whole story, but I looked it up briefly before I did the pot. See your boy doing the research. Research. Um, dude, do your research guy. Go fuck yourself. Yeah. Uh <laughs> it's I just don't why why how come I've have we become too sorry to get too I guess serious here. Sorry if I'm not hitting the funny bone yet, but don't worry, it's getting there. Stick with it. That's what the timestamps are for. By the way, read the timestamps if you want to skip around. I'm a generous guy. I put in the time so you can... I understand everyone's got daily. I understand I put three or four of these out a week. I don't expect everyone to listen every minute, but I do respect uh, the few personal... I've actually had two people come up in person that I kind of know, and they're like, hey, I listened to a blah, blah, blah episode. Fucking awesome. I was like, thanks, bud. And a little shit like that, it uh, strikes the iron, you know, keeps it hot. Don't get an attitude, because I will drop this podcast, even though it's not hot at all. So, why am I dropping it? Uh, It's kind of like subjects. I'm like, drop the subjects. Like, hmm, I guess it's too hot for you. But yeah, no, nah, you, I, I don't get this. What, what's, what's with the anger of it getting blocked? Like, who the fuck are you? Not even talking about media, but just the person at home, like, I need to know how Danny Tanner died. Like, no, you fucking don't. You don't care the fact that Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen are on the path of death in six years anyways with their drug and alcohol induced. You don't care about that. This guy died at a pretty standard age. Well, I don't know. It was like 60-something. It's a little younger than you would like, but he definitely lived a, f- sorry to do it, a full life. Um, and it's sad. But this whole, like, we are obligated to the autopsy, like, no, the only people that are obligated to it is the people who are most directly firsthand affected by it. His family. Like, if I died, like, I, I would, I could, I don't think anyone, any of you, I don't think any of, I don't even think my job, if it doesn't happen on the job, like, how'd he die? If, if, like, people close by, like, could we read not say? You know what? What are they going to do? A pri- do a pri- have a private investigator to find out how I really died? It's like, it doesn't matter. He's not coming to work. Sorry, you don't have anyone to fill in your shifts that no one else shows up for. But, hey, you worked him to death, and now here he is in your bed of lies. See, Jesus, I had to do it. God, um, I don't get the, I, I, I don't know. It's not even that big of a deal. I feel like it's a situation that's just being blown out of proportion. It's like the Florida... Unless they're hiding the autopsy from the family, which from what I read, that's not really what's happening. It's like the family knows. They're just like, hey, let's not. But they're blocked because if the family knew, they could just go out on Twitter and just say it if they really wanted to. And I don't think there's any legal ramifications. It's someone death in their family. They can't sue them for, hey, you can't reveal how your, you know, brother or your dad died. It's like, what the fuck? Why can't I? No. So it's got to be the family knows and they're like, hey, can we just keep this private? It's like when we found out, the only time it kind of matters is if we think like there's like the Michael Jackson shit where... Apparently, I forgot exactly what he, quote, unquote, he died from the whole, was it Oxycontin or some type of prescription drug. Uh, he died from some type of drug overdose, but then there's like, hmm, was he actually prescribed there? Was it under the table? Was he being prescribed? No one with these other effects, and that's when the doctor got in trouble because it's basically illegal, under the table, knowing the health risks, or he kind of slipped in some shit in there. And that was like a whole trial and shit. But apparently this is just an incident like, hey, there's probably some shit they don't want out there for whatever reason. It could be image. It could be this. It doesn't really matter. Let the man rest in peace. We always talk about resting in peace until it actually comes down to resting in peace. The dude didn't murder anyone. He just died. Let him rest in peace. People who don't hurt people on this, while they're on this earth, 
they should be allowed to rest in peace without any questions asked. I don't know, but what the fuck do I do? Full house of lies. Seems like there's a lot of lies. Or there's a lot of something going on here. And maybe there's more fishiness. And maybe it's more of a... The fact that a court system can't even have that power. I don't know. It's weird to me. Um, but okay. Yeah. So... Now, let's get to the pod. Just thought I get my thoughts on that. I have a little opening storyline. That's not a. I felt like I did a lot of bitch in last spot. You know, calm it, calm it down a bit. Uh, there is something though. Ah, oh, Jesus, Clint, always saying, "Oh, here's the cyn- the cynical, uh, the cynical, uh, part of the pod." Sorry. Who the fuck created house sitting? If you want to talk about something, let me kick my feet up. If you want to talk about something, that is the definition of created for rich people. And I understand house sitting applies to all incomes, all streams, no discrimination in house sitting. But house sitting is one of the biggest, I don't even call it scam. Because even the people that are paying for it know it's bullshit. But I think it's just kind of keeping up with the Joneses mentality. Like, oh, when I go on vacation for a week and a half, I voluntarily go on. Hmm. Ah, Jesus, I need to hire someone to make sure my house doesn't burn down. Hey, I got a newsflash for you. If you don't leave the oven on, your house is not going to burn down. If you don't leave the water running... Shit's not going to flood. If you just do what you're supposed to do before you leave, chances are your house is going to be fine. So this whole thing that house sitting is to quote unquote watch the house. Make sure everything's running accordingly. Or the number one thing is house sitting for the dogs. House sitting for the animals. If you guys never heard just leaving, having one of those refillable Big ass food containers and as your dog's eating and shit, it just refills and the big water jugs. And if they need the shit, just lay some newspaper out. It's not that difficult. You know, double, triple layer, I don't know, charming that shit. <laughs> no pun intended. But house sitting. I'll I, I always try to understand why would I hire a house sitter? Let me tell you. Anyone that says I'm a professional house sitter, you want to talk about, I, you know, I would rather you honestly be unemployed and cover and actually accept unemployment checks that make more than I do than to sit here and say you make money sitting on someone else's leather sofa to watch TV while you're fucking the busty Asian chick from O'Charlie's. Because, you know, she gives you the all-you-can-eat chicken tenders. Munch, munch. And, oh, you get your free pie. Yeah, fuck off. And then you're going to eat the pie with whipped cream on my fucking couch. On my dime. I'm paying you to fuck the Asian waitress from O'Charlie's. Are you fucking insane? Oh, yeah. Oh. So, I'm going to have you house sit. Food that I know is going to expire. So, your job is to eat my food. The bit before it expires, so my fridge doesn't smell bad. Instead of cooking the food, I'm oh well, maybe just cook and use your kit. Hey, you know what? If you care that much, prepare before your vacation. Don't buy food that's gonna expire before you go on vacation or you're gone for a week and a half. Wherever the fuck you're going, where you're like, I need someone to watch my house. Are you fucking insane? Or hey. Whatever food you have, tell them to take it to their home. House sitting. Literally, I'm paying someone to sit in my house. And they're getting paid to be in a better place than their own home. I'm paying you for an upgrade. I'm paying you to upgrade your daily lifestyle for this time being. Are you fucking insane? Because, look, I'm assuming if you have a house sitter and you're paying someone 
to be a house sitter. I'm assuming you have a means of income. And I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money. But goddamn, I'm going to judge you. I'm going to judge the fuck out of you. And for, and you know, th- there's uh, the one thing I could think of is, oh, someone's going to come in and rob me. Well, what if someone comes in and tries to rob my house and shit? It's like, oh, so instead of just letting people rob your house in peace and relying on the alarm system that you pay 800 bucks a month to secure the home to and the police come or not, and then they take your shit and whatever the fuck, you're going to put a person in danger when you get robbed. For those robbers to beat the fuck out of them, take them hostage, or God forbid, kill them. Because you want to make sure your house is safe. You know, I don't like to be that guy. I don't like to be... I'm trying so hard to not be so cynical. I really am. But when I see these Craigslist openings, when I see these profe... You know, you ever come across those like Instagram or YouTube videos or five surprising jobs you didn't know you'd get paid for? And one of them is house sitting. It really makes me like, wow, we will just pay for the slightest bit of nothing. And the worst part, people have such a persuasive and marketing ability, I guess, where they convince you that you need someone to watch a house where nothing is happening. Because guess what? If no one's in the house, nothing's going to happen. No TV is going to be turned on. No water is going to turn on. You don't have to worry about the house burning down. You don't have to worry about a random electrical fire. Because you're not using any electricity if you turn off the lights. We just have created titles. Is this one of the things when we always hear, oh, this president created 400,000 jobs this year. Is 80,000 of them jobs like house sitting? Because every time I see there's so many jobs available, how come apparently when people apply, it takes five weeks just for them to get an interview? If there's so many fucking jobs available. I guess house sitting is one of those jobs where it's like they consider that a job. And their idea of house sitting isn't even like, oh, it's like, oh, what, you really think my my cat, you really think my dog, well, I, well let's give a dog name. You think my dog, Skip, wow, that's a fucking, I, I didn't even mean to make it a means of a movie, but you think my dog, Skip, my good old golden retriever, Skip, I'm gonna make him golden retriever, it's my favorite type of dog, you think my golden retriever, Skip? It's just going to be there like a fucking sad, depressed meme. Be like, oh, I really wish my owner was here. And talk like Eeyore in his head. And be like, well, hey, thank God for this random house sitter that I've never seen before. It's like, you know what? If he wants to remember me, he knows how much I love him. That's why I have pictures of myself around the house. He can look up and be like, that's my guy. And he's taken care of. He's got his shots. I under all right. Here's what I understand. If you have a dog walker, I understand. But you know what? At the same time, it's like, hey, if you care about your dog and cat that much, where you're so worried they're gonna be avoidant of human contact, why don't you just send them to a fucking vet or like a vet, what a veterinarian or a freaking vet? daycare like a doggy daycare well i don't know that shit could be expensive as fuck so i don't know but why don't you just send your animal to someone you trust that's house sitting where you're at and just pay them to hey can you just watch my dog i'll pay you to watch my dog he's a golden retriever it's pretty easy to get along with and if he bites you jesse you deserve it sorry still a little bit in this there but house sitting Literally, you were just paying someone to enjoy the fruits of your labor, and you're paying them more. You're paying them 
the fruits of your labor to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Something about that doesn't make sense. Like when I go to work, they're paying me the work. They're not paying me to upgrade. <laughs> they're not paying me, like they're not giving me a king size memory foam bed at work to take naps in between to upgrade my lifestyle from here. It's like, nah, here's the money. Do what you want outside of here. When you're here, you know, fuck your happiness. Not literally, but you know. They're not, they're not upgrading my luxury. This isn't a freaking hotel suite where it's like, hey, uh, we're actually just going to upgrade you to the suites. No extra charge. Oh, and we're going to add points. And we're actually going to pay you to stay here this weekend. Nah. You're in my fucking house. I'm not paying someone to sit in my house while I'm not there. And, you know, so we never have fr- And the weird part about these house-sitting shit is, it, for some reason, you rely on essentially a complete stranger who does a service to house-sit. And stay there. Eat there. Make love there. Spend their time there while you're spending time elsewhere. How about you just lock the doors? Is that a crazy thing? And if you get robbed, don't put someone else in danger. Jesus. House sitting. Like, who the fuck? Jesus. I'm, I'm, like, it, it befuddles me so much. My mind is in a, my mind is in a, fu- a befuddlement thinking about this shit. I'm sorry, you, your job, it's, it's, it's one of the, it's got to be one of the biggest persuasive scams, and there's got to be some human psychology behind it, where we convince people, it's like, hmm, I can make money off of this, I can convince someone that they need this, and someone did it, and then they pass it on to someone else, pass on to someone else, the word got around, and everyone's like, hey, if you don't have a house sitter, what's the fuck is wrong with you? I don't know how sitting. Oh, Jesus. That was a pretty weak rant. I thought I had a lot more there. Not gonna lie to you. I'm a little slow on the ball today. Uh, oh, Jesus. I guess just sucking the life out of me. Um, Walmart. Not specifically Walmart. Um, I've always kind of in the back of my head have had a theory. And let me clarify. I am not a Subway guy. I do not eat at Subway. Really. I can't remember the last time I actually had Subway. Nothing wrong with Subway. It's probably been at least a couple years. I think I used to eat there semi-regularly. Like five years ago when I worked at a place that had to buy a Subway and on break. I would go there to eat. But, you know... I have a theory that Subway's and Walmart and really any like food places like company fast food places, I guess you want to clear like, you know, now there's like Starbucks and coffee. There's Starbucks and grocery stores like you go into some Kroger's there'll be random Starbucks Target. That's where some Starbucks are like little Starbucks stands in a corner, you know. It's never as efficient as actually going to a Starbucks, but for the convenience, it's like, it's actually kind of a cool deal. Uh, There's, and Walmart has, they used to have the relationship with McDonald's, but I think, you know, the whole health stuff, Walmart's like, this is a bad thing for McDonald's. Like, there's this one McDonald's in a Walmart, like, all the way, like, 40 minutes away in a town that I'm not going to say because then it gives away my location. But, you know, there's, there's a McDonald's. If you go walk all the way back there by the deli section in the milk, it's just a random McDonald's there that I can't believe. Like, those people, they're like, I can't believe we get paid to be at the back of here at a McDonald's. But imagine you're by the orange juice and you're like, hmm, ah, fuck it. Get a double cheeseburger before I head over to, you know, the cream cheese. 
The fact that it's in between the milk and the cream cheese is wild. Because it's just a continuous section that they just blocked with the middle of a McDonald's. It is the wildest thing. Um, but the craze, you know, I've noticed that there is not only a quality difference in Subway's and Walmart's compared to Subway's. On its own island, by its own island, I mean all subways are like in a strip mall connect by it. Every subway is by like a tanning salon. Every subway is by like a Chinese, you know, Hong Kong number three cuisine type of place. Every subway is by Little Caesars. Every subway is by like another kind of big business that's, you know, has too many locations and high turnover rate because people are like fuck this shit and it's always like a couple it's always like a couple spots away from a underperforming mexican restaurant that's like every other mexican restaurant that's underperforming and it doesn't even have an alcohol license doesn't sound like a booming uh business to me but whatever you can have your crunchy taco thursday for one ninety nine a taco. It's like literally tacos are cheaper at Taco Bell. You can't have specials, and you be more expensive than Taco Bell, and it's a special. But whatever. Um, I've always kind of had this theory that Subways, one, they taste better, come from a Walmart, and. They just, the ones that stand alone, I think they are the ones that always have like the viral videos of employees losing their shit because they got rude ass customers. Because I feel like it's a different tone. The same person could go into a subway by Little Caesars where it's part of a strip mall. So you still view it as like an isolated business. And you're like, what the fuck is subway going to do to me, huh? I could raise hell, be a cunt, be a fucking ass wipe, tell these people their life sucks. Tell them to add more chicken when they've already doubled my chicken, but I don't want to get charged the double chicken. So I really want triple chicken, but get charged for a single amount of chicken. All because the customer is always right. Eat fresh. But you know what? You'd rather eat fresh. All right. Uh, more like refresh, bud, when I'm constantly adding the views to the video. Um, and... You tell I'm really not on it today, but we're going to get through this, guys. We're going to get through this part of the beauty of this business is sometimes, even when you don't have it, you got to have it. Uh, that kind of sound like either either I'm fucking or either we fucking or I'm fucking. Oh, Bill Cosby, such inspiration. Um, But yeah, the, the subways, but you don't see any videos and... Honestly, even in person, I have not even seen any contentious interactions at my experiences, which I used to be a regular at Subways inside of Walmarts. I've even gone, you, you know, you know, you were ratchet. I'm sorry. Yeah, I was a ratchet individual. I used to go inside of Walmart to just get Subway and not even go to Walmart. Honestly, thought I was like reinventing the wheel. Honestly, thought like I was doing something I wasn't supposed to. I felt like when I walk out, I get some side eyes from the greeters. But then again, hey, your job is to greet me and to tell me to go to fuck home. So, I wonder if the, I wonder if I wonder if you work at the Walmart. I'm assuming you get employee discounts of some kind. Do you get employee discounts at the subways or at the near or like at the nail salon or the random like toy arcade that they'll try to have? Or, you know, the fucking random barbershop, not barbershop, but haircut place, you know, they always have a, they always have a random eye vision thing, like a vision works. I don't know, but yeah, it's, um, I was sitting there, well, I wasn't sitting there recently, but what inspired this, I, this theory of mine, the reimburse back in my head is, I was by Walmart earlier, which by the way, <laughs> I must say, I was by the Walmart that was by 
the stop parking in front of stores episode where people with hazard lights that park in front of takeout places and get shit to go, but then they eat inside anyways and they just still stay parked out front with the hazard lights on. They're fucking douchebags. When I pulled up, there was someone doing it again. And I honestly couldn't believe it. I like, did they not fucking listen? But I'm like, of course they did. Um, yeah. Well, by the time I got out of my car, the car disappeared. But they were there when I got there with hazard lights on. Not the same car before. I didn't even see who was what. But all I know is that when I got out of my car, they drove off with the hazard lights on. They drove a good 50 feet before they took the hazard lights off. But whatever. But I always have a theory that I think those situations don't happen inside of a Walmart, which is pretty kind of, I don't know if ironic is the right word, but it's kind of interesting to me that Walmart is like the place where it's open season, man. Anything that happens in a Walmart happens in a Walmart type of shit. They say what happens in Vegas happens in Vegas. You know what, man? Down here in these parts of town, what happens in Walmart it just happens at Walmart. It doesn't even stay in Walmart. Because chances are, it's probably going to be recorded and put out in the atmosphere and in the world. But goddamn, it's going to happen in a Walmart. It just is, man. There's a reason why they have security at Target and not Walmart. Because even security doesn't want to deal with the shit at Walmart. <laughs> at Target, though, man, they got, oh, shit. Uh, this eight-year-old kid still a bouncy ball? It's like, uh, probably not. It's like, got to make sure. Walmart, it's like, eh. Eh, well, hey, that guy didn't pay for those 50-inch TVs. It's like, eh, what are you going to do? It's Walmart. And I was actually, I, really, before I get back to the thing, I was actually talking to someone about uh, the electronics section at Walmart has changed over time. They care less and less. Like, they don't have experts in the electronics section. Not that I go to Walmart for electronics section. But I remember I went to get the exact cord for why you're able to hear me on this camera. Whatever this $4 cord that makes the magic happen. Magic touch. Uh, I went there and I was trying to double confirm. Like, hey, you know, is this, you know, what would be better, this or that? Because then they're like, uh, well, it depends. Uh, do you want it to have good buzz? Or like, what the fuck are you talking about? I saw like, uh, I don't think you understand what I'm asking. And they're like, I don't. And the dude was ripped out of his mind. And by ripped, I mean his eyes. They were ripped. Because he literally didn't have one. Anyways, uh, that's Walmart for you. But back in day electronics, man, the electronics session used to have like the little games you could play. Any like new MLB game, you could play like two innings on there. Any Madden game, you could play like a third quarter on there. And you could just have like a preview demo. And that would be the whole reason why you would go to your with your mom at Walmart. Nowadays, there's no incentive to go with your mom at Walmart. There's no incentive to go anywhere to Walmart unless you actually need some from Walmart. There's no place for kids to be distracted. They took all that shit out. They've reduced the game in section. They have no one with knowledge back there. They barely even have a person that's dedicated to that area. They're just like, hey, can you cover like the electronics, the toy, the mattress section? Uh, oh, yeah. Can you cover the hunting section too? Yeah, just cover all four areas. You'll be fine. It's like I know nothing about hunting. And I, I know nothing about selling guns it's like ah you know learn on the job if you have any questions ask todd and then they try to reach todd and todd is a uh, asleep outside in the garden section talk about garden of eden because he be eating this dick <laughs> oh jesus sadly that's probably the best joke of the whole pod this pod sucks but it's cool keep it going uh but yeah walmart I have a theory that the reason why people, we don't see incidents of subway incidents inside of Walmarts and viral videos, and I haven't even seen any contentious moments, is because Walmart's not someone to fuck with. As weird as that sounds, I know everything I said about Walmart, like, it's open season, they let whatever happen, but Subway's like, hey... I feel like Walmart protects this 40, 
55 by 50 feet subway company section. I'm sure they have a partnership deal with like, hey, man, we don't know what happens in your store. And honestly, we don't care. We look at this as like having a store at a mall. If something happens in these hallways, not on us. And we're not going to, you know, harp on it. But you're going to protect the subway. It's like when a parent says, hey, you can do whatever to me. You can shit on me. Talk about me. Tell me I'm the worst parent in the world. But don't you dare come after my son. And that's why I think Walmart defends Subway. It's like, you don't come after Subway. You don't come after their small chains in the stores. They're like, us? Yeah, shit on us. We're fucking rich as hell. We don't give a fuck. But you're not going to come after Subway. I think Subway's like, please don't. <laughs> wow, that kind of. Ooh. I really should learn about it. But, ah, eh, fuck it. Who cares? You know what? People say, oh, you're stereotyping. It's like, is it stereotyping if 80% of the places I go, it applies? All because I need to protect the 20% of places that that doesn't apply? I don't know. Is it stereotype or is it truth? Now, I'm a truth teller and a nude getter. And I knew her. And that's why she's getting it from someone else. Anyways, Subway. Eat fresh. But yeah. It's a very... And also, if you work at that Subway, do you apply through Subway? Or do you apply through Walmart? Because Walmart's really what owns Subway in that situation. It's like, you can't say you're like your own business, but you're relying on the traffic of hundreds of thousands of people that walk into Walmart's door to... Get you some extra business. You typically want it. I wonder how much. I wonder how much of a percentage Walmart gets from whatever Subway makes. They, they, I'm pretty sure they get a pretty fat percentage. It also suck the work there because if you're in an isolated Subway, you're not getting freaking 200 customers an hour. You know, you'll get your three hours in between like four and seven thirty. I'm assuming well, that's three and a half hours, Clint. Do do. It's like after school, maybe you get a dinner rush where people want to get your $5 sub sandwiches or buy one. God forbid if it's one of those buy one, get one free days. Ah, Jesus. Or one of those free sub days. That's got to be the worst. Like, that's the type of day where, you know, I think there's certain days and certain businesses where pay should just raise for that day. It's like, you're about to put me through some fuckery today. And at Subway, those days where they have buy one, get one free sub. It's like, I'm sorry, you are not paying me seven seventy five today. You gotta you gotta double my pay today. Just at the very just today, and then tomorrow when I come back to work, treat me like the piece of shit you think I am, which is fine. But today, I'm making you a lot of money. At least pay me something. You know, at least make today. It's like two people are gonna call out. It's just gonna be me and another person. So trust me, you're still making your numbers. You're getting in two people to work the amount of four. And don't worry, we still hate our job after. So, it's just interesting to me. All those days, like, a business, like, hey, maybe today's the day you ramp it up. You think during certain times of year you would incentivize, I don't know, a uh, subway. Yeah. I, I guess my theory, getting to the fucking point, Clint, getting to the fucking point, is that subway... Is that Subway inside of Walmart has very little issues that we typically see from Subway. We, you've seen the Subway videos of like middle-aged woman. For some reason, when people pull out their phone and record themselves being dickheads, jackasses, cunt, bitch-ass motherfuckers to people. For some reason, they think, this is going to go well for me. Anytime you record yourself being a jackass, let me just speak for the world. You don't make yourself look good. And I know what people are going to say. Oh, well, we don't know what led up to that. It's like, well, you know what? They didn't record what led up to that. Obviously, you only recorded what you wanted the world to see. So you're right. You recorded what you wanted the world to see. And on top of that, you put it out there. And you're really like... This is what's going to get people on my side. Treating a person who's making seven seventy five, dollars dealing with your complicated sandwich, putting the actual proper amount of meat on your food, 
and you're sitting there be like, I want more. Oh, you want more? Well, bitch, you're going to have to pay more. I'm not paying more. It's like, that's not how this works. And be like, why do you care? It's not your food. It's like, yeah. Except I could get fired. I get bitched at. They write me up. I'm costing their food shortage, even though I'm really not. If I make exception for you one time, then I have to make it for every time. Someone else sees you do it, then they think they can do it. You see how this works? Shit's not complicated. But I would never see at Walmart. Because you know why? At a Walmart, you're not in this isolated space where people walk in and they feel uncomfortable. Because it's like two different worlds. Like the Walmart world... The 80,000 square feet, 800,000 square feet, it feels like, place where you get anything in the world. And as you walk out, you're like, eh, let's get a sub. I know we just spent 240 bucks on groceries, but hey, fuck it. It's Subway tonight, baby. 35 bucks for all of us. That's genius. Because they're getting all, people are getting all these groceries And guess what? If Subway is four stores down from that Walmart in a shopping center, not that Walmart's ever really part of a shopping center, only, you know, Publix is in Publix. I said Publix. Only Publix and Kroger's and all these chain grocery stores actually part of, like, chain. Because Walmart's like, nah, we actually just need this whole fucking thing for us. Sorry. But, I mean, you could try to get a deal to work inside of us and we still get a percentage of your shit. That's business. Uh, but yeah, if there's like a subway four place down, there's like an eighty percent chance you're like, nah, I don't really feel like fuck it. We'll just go home. That's genius. On the way out, you're like, fuck it. We've already spent two forty. Might as well have thirty five. <laughs> like you know, enjoy, enjoy the hard work we spent the last two hours filling up this cart full of food. Because it is, you know, I don't know. Grocery shopping is like a real like activity. It's not something you respect. And I'm not out here filling the big carts up with, you know, a bunch of juicy fruit and, you know, fruit roll-ups and, you know, three 12-packs of soda, you know, for the kids. But, you know, man, if you ever got a big bag of rice, you know, you got to put it in the cart. (laughs) Get a couple jugs of water, man. Hey, man, you know, it's not just water weight. (laughs) Oh, Jesus, Clint. Um... You know, the straps aren't always compact. You know, yeah, make sure you, you know, carry that shit. Center of gravity. And so, I, you know, I have, a, I have a grasp, I guess, you know, throw some sauce bottles. Sometimes it's glass. Sometimes it's heavy plastic, you know. Shit adds up. So I kind of understand. And even, like, the 15 minutes I spend, it's like, God, man, I can't believe, like, people do this every week. People do this every week, and they get 18 times the amount of shit I'm getting. Jesus. But yeah, Subway. (laughs) Um, I I really think, like, the theory behind the, the preciseness and the delicacy that happens inside of a subway inside of a walmart is the fact that there's too much on the line i I really think they they probably have the best training process it's like hey man if you can work here you can work anywhere anywhere in the world if you can handle walmart amount of customers in a subway in a small subway you're getting Walmart traffic customers. It would be like if... It would be like if... um. Imagine if Joe Rogan's audience just all came to my audience overnight. That would be overwhelming. I wouldn't know what to do with that. Imagine. That's what these Subway... Subway is me and Walmart is Joe Rogan. Wow. Always making comparisons to people I have no business comparing to. Except for white cis males. Um... And he's literally twice my age. <laughs> but, but, I wouldn't know what to do with that. But guess what? After a month, if I was able to adjust and keep, uh, and keep 
most of the audience and get so good at it, it's undeniable. There would be a sense of, I can do anything in this world. So, that's what feels like being a Subway employee at a Walmart. Is, you're me. And Walmart is, by far and away, the best in the game. And here I am, at Subway. Doing all the work. But very little of the percentage. It's funny how that is. Capitalism. Anyways. <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess the final theory, as I've been trying to say for eight minutes now, before I get into all these tangents and sidetracked. Uh, subways and Walmarts. I can't believe I've talked 20 fucking minutes about a subway. Jesus, Clint. But yeah. Subways and Walmarts, I, I really think that it's just survival of the fittest, man. I bet you it makes you respect work. I bet you, you know, uh, I also think when you are like, it, it's like being a nice store in a bad neighborhood. It's kind of like, it's kind of like living in a really nice McMansion in a very lower class, like, have you ever, have you ever been through, I wouldn't even say neighborhoods, have you, like, have you ever driven, like, on just side roads and shit, and then there's all these, like, I don't want to call them trash homes, but they're definitely broken down homes, rusty as hell, yards not taken care of, they are just, they are just a band, they look like abandoned places with broken down cars in the driveway, and then literally like 200 feet away, there's this gate, this big ass gate, long ass around property, and then you just see this long driveway to this $900,000 house, that's kind of like, that's kind of like what it's like, you're treating that sub, like, that subway's a $900,000 house, right? And yeah, you know what? You're taken care of. You're secure. You have the security system, like the house sitter. And, but the area around you is like, we don't give a fuck. We will walk right into your house. We will walk right into your subway and take care of business if we see fit. It's kind of like a beyond scare straight thing. It's like, hey. You're going to respect the businesses around here. We don't care who you are, where you're from. Walmart, really, I guess Walmart is the biggest self-policing people. It's just like, hey, man, no fuckery here. No justification nonsense. If you cut in line, we're getting in a shadow match. Might pull some hair. Might, I might punch your wife. <laughs> you know, hey, man, dudes punch girls. Dudes punch wives at Walmart. That's shit that happens. Target's like, oh, the, everyone separate. And then you just yell at a distance, pretending you're going to do shit. Target, you got to do the hold me back thing at Walmart. No one's holding you back. Everyone's pulling out their phones and be like, this fucking guy. Uh, it's ruthless, but it's honest. And I'd rather be behind ruthless, honest people than deceiving, hold me back people that say they're going to do shit. And some people go into isolated subways, independent franchises, whatever the fuck, where they just stand alone, subway places, and they go in there with a sense of entitlement. No one goes inside the subway at Walmart with a sense of entitlement. You know why? Because there's ramifications. Because you don't know, because at any given time, man, look, let's be honest, we go into certain places, we can make safe judgments of more times than not. The type of people they're going to be in there. Uh, in terms of dangerous people. In terms of, yeah, chances are I'm going to take my chances at this specific gas station. There's probably not going to be uh, dudes in there walking around with, you know, guns and shit free willingly. And then you might go to another one and it's like, hey, man, if you want to get out alive, run for your life. Um 50-50. You might get your you might get your car stolen here. It probably will happen. It's happened four times this week. Here, and there's like eight cops in the parking lot. Probably not. 
like any quick trip nowadays. It's just uh and I think that's one thing. Walmart is a definition community. I'm thinking this as I'm thinking aloud. Can't believe it took me 50 minutes to start actually getting to a fucking point of something. <laughs> Walmart's really a community. Without Walmart, you know, we got a bunch of self-pretentious ass wipes like Target. We got wannabe Rosses. We got Cole. Well, Ross is actually pretty down the Ross is like down the earth Goodwill. It's honestly, it's a glorified Goodwill. Goodwill is actually has a lot more variety of shit. Ross is like, oh, we got it from distributors. Like, yeah, but you guys don't treat it in the back area. And you got to just throw it out with some fake tag on it. Um, that's how, and Big Lots, I don't know what happened to them. They turned it really just like a furniture store and like, hey, uh, <laughs> whatever you can find in here before we go out of business. And if you're one of those weirders that go to fucking Ingles, and I'm not talking about Joe on the Jazz. I'm talking about like, there's an actual grocery store named Ingles. I'm not trusting any, like, meat product from Ingles. They get, like, the leftovers. Like, Ingles probably gets the food that the real grocery stores don't sell in time in terms of expiration date, and they slap a new label and give it to Ingles. That's really what Ingles is for. The Ingles, the Piggly Wigglies, the Food Lions. (laughs) Like, I'm not shitting on those places. Hey, man, like, grocery store, food is food. In the day. But there's uh, levels to this. You know what? It's okay. There's lower, middle, and upper class of shit. But just because it's upper class doesn't mean I actually like it. Like I don't like I don't really like going to Publix for grocery shopping. Not to get too deep in the weeds here. I go to Publix strictly for sandwiches. And the only reason I bring this up is because I was talking to someone. Like every grocery store has its strengths. Like Publix has the deli area and the sandwiches. It's like not even close. Kroger has, like, the most all-around grocery store that's trustworthy. Uh, It's just evenly decent. And, you know, you go to the food lines, the Piggly Wiggly's, Angles. Do what you want, you know, at your own risk. But, one thing I... Walmart is a community of... Hey, man. No nonsense here. Even though nonsense happens, but if nonsense happens, you're going to deal with the ramifications of your nonsense. But Target's like the sense of, Target's like the, well, you don't understand the context and nuance of what happened. And it's this high, and it's this 50 minute explanation from someone from why they had $200 worth of electronic stolen Fitbits. And calculate and like fucking, you know, fit electronic shit. It's like, meh. It's like, and then it's like almost like you could be convinced. Like, all right, well, you know what? We're sorry for stopping you. You know what? Go about your day. That would that shit wouldn't have been a Best Buy. Best Buy, man, I, I went in there one time. And it's weird. I, when I bought this fucking camera, something that was like 12 to 1300 bucks, I was mad. Because when I walked out, they did not check me. Every single time I've ever gone to Best Buy, they have checked me. Even when I was with a friend and didn't buy anything. They checked me. And you know what? I respect it. I understand. It's electronics, money, shit. Cool. I don't take it personally when people check me. If you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to hide. But the one time, I wanted them to check me, and they didn't fucking check me. It's like, oh, so you just would have let me walk out with this $1,200 camera. Because here's the problem. What if, what if I bought that $1,200 camera, right? Went to the register, bought it. And then, you know, and then I was like, oh, shit, I got to go to the bathroom. And I tell like the best part, hey, I don't want to just leave this out. Can you hold this? And so when I come to the back, sure. And the register person, cashier, accidentally leaves on the thing. They get distracted like, Hey, Jim, can you come over here to the Geek Squad section when nothing the Geek Squad has ever helped anyone? I haven't seen a Geek Squad car in a long time. I guess they kind of gave up on that business venture. Uh, and then leaves it out. And some guy's walking there trying to get some fucking one of his laptops fixed 
or whatever. And he sees this bag with the camera in it. And he looks in. He's, you know, sneaking around because he's a curious little fucker. Looks in. Sees a receipt and says, hmm. He kind of glances over. Looks he's already paid for. And he's like, hmm, you know what? I'll come back for the laptop. And I grabs his laptop. Picks up my bag. Walks out. And guess what? He doesn't get checked. And then guess what? I am fucked. But hey, check me. So one time, I know I'm one of the few people, probably the definition of white privilege, I guess. Please, like, like fucking stop me, drop all my shit, make me nude, and do what you gotta do. Make me feel like I'm a threat to steal from you. The fact that you look at me like, meh, come on. This guy... He can't steal shit from us. Like, oh, you don't think I can steal from you? Huh, okay. Trust me, man. I could be a culture vulture. I can appropriate some shit. I could capitalize. But whatever. Another conversation for another day on that. Uh, but yeah. One thing we will always appreciate about Walmart is Walmart is a community. And I will always stand behind Walmart. Um... Uh, is it a perfect business? No. Are they out of stock sometimes of some things? Are there some areas of the store where they just completely neglect because they actually don't look and see if people buy shit and they've had the same bird food out for like three months? Those damn fish in the back. You really think there's feeding those fish on a regular basis? No. All those fish are there for. I guess they've just replaced the electronic entertainment for kids with the fish. And the entertainment is just kids fucking doing like the Nemo with the kid in the brace and the dentist's office. Just, oh, look at the fish. And tap, 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 scaring the fucking fish. And that's all really the fish area is for. It's just replace the electronic. Instead, you get playing MLB The Show 15. Hitting it outside the park with Bryce Hopper. He's uh, banging the glass and scaring the fish. And ironically, the fish in water feels like a fish out of water. Because it's trapped in a fucking warehouse where 10,000 people walk by it every day and just stare at it. Imagine if you're just in a glass case and you can only go, as it will just make it for a human realistic. Let's say you can only go in a 20 feet radius, which is probably what it feels like for a fish in their, you know, aquarium thing. Imagine you could just go in an isolated chamber and once in a while someone drops some fucking, you know... I don't know, granola bars. Yeah, we give them those dry... Imagine just someone throws you a couple granola bars every couple hours. and be like, hey man, you're getting your calorie intake. Shut the fuck up. Enjoy the view. Um, Shamu. <laughs> you're basically Shamu in human form. Uh, imagine someone did that. And you're just in this 20 feet a radius box. And 10,000 people just walking by, pointing and staring at you. Yeah. You feel a little out of place. You feel a little inhumane. You would think like, something's not right here. I'm not a fish. I mean, I'm, you know, I could be a little juiced to the gills at time if I'm, you know, really hitting it. But, you know, working out, working out underwater, that's not what humans are made for. Just because you can do it. Like, and people don't say, oh, we have the human fish and fishing. It's like half their body is still above water when they're swimming. You know, it's in the Olympics, there's not actually like underwater pure swimming. It's like half of your body above your back and your shoulders and neck and your fists. You're, you're doing the fish up and down. You're basically like a, you're more of a dolphin in water, not a fish. Not like the traditional trout fish. You're a fucking dolphin. More than anything, you're going above your dorsal fin. Do it, putting on a show. And like, you're, like, you know, your head's coming out of water every three seconds. Like, it's a, yeah, so even when people say humans are the, humans are pretty close to fish, it's like, no, nah, I mean, you know, not really. We literally live and completely, they can only survive in water for long periods of time, and outside of water, they die pretty quickly. We can go underwater, but just pure body, just going underwater, not going to last very long. 
oh, well, this David Blaine held his breath and Chris Angel held his fucking breath for, what, 70 hours underwater? It's like, yeah, okay, you believe that? Go ahead. If you believe Chris Angel survived 70 hours or whatever the fuck it was underwater, if you really believe that David Blaine is like really, he do, and they do amazing things, specifically David Blaine, Chris Angel could kind of eat my ass. Because you know what, I fell for it, there's a personal attachment, I actually felt like this man walked on water. And then of course, kind of like with WWE wrestling, when you watch all, when people debunk it and you can blatantly see like, oh my god, I can't believe I couldn't see what's actually happened on TV. It's amazing what camera edits can do for, and it really pisses you off, not gonna lie. And I'm not a guy that feels like, oh, I was deceptive, I was lied to, because you know what, I should have known better. I take responsibility, I should have known better that, hey, you know why men don't walk on water? Because you kind of can't. And the fact that I thought a guy named Chris was spelled with C-R-I-S-S with the extra S, kind of like he's, like Chris Angel, Chris is basically supposed to be, he's basically trying to be like Christ. He could walk on water, levitate, he has a bigger than life figure, he can do ungodly things, well I guess godly things, ungodly would actually be human, which is kind of weird when people say, oh that's such an ungodly accomplishment, it's like actually ungodly would mean human, so a very human accomplishment. Godly would be the actual compliment to be like, holy shit, they did some above and beyond. But hey, nitpicking. But yeah, should have known better. Chris Angel, mind freak. Are you fucking kidding me, man? And when you look back, none of it was really mind blowing. It's only mind blowing when you're like 11 years old and you really think that the man walking on plexiglass was like, hmm. It's like, could this man walk on a tsunami? Yeah, probably not. If a tsunami were to come, would he just glide through the water and the water does nothing? Like, nah, man, he's going to be a victim of what happens to tsunamis. Victims. Wow, that took a dark turn. But uh, this podcast is a full house of lies. And I just made it a little bit fuller. And I am... It's fucking full of my shit this episode. This episode was garbage. I'm so disappointed because I'm gonna be honest, a little behind the scenes. I really thought the I really thought I was gonna have some great deeper house sitting rant. And I felt like it went better in my head throughout the day. And it really disappointed myself. Could I re-record and make it better? Probably. But you know what? One take Clint. At least that's why I try to tell them. Can't do it twice in a day, even though I gotta record two episodes a day. Well, I don't have to, but you know. Make the life easier for the boy. This, this pot's called the House of Lies, but it really should just be called the Walmart House of Lies. Even though really, Walmart's just a house of truths. Walmart is the house of truth. Damn. You know, that's the best part. When you talk to it for an hour, you'll finally come to something that made sense. Walmart is a house of truth. And Subway is a prime example. Just pay for it. Just pay for the double meat. I understand it's not really double meat, but you know what? You're not special. It's where people see the five dollar. Here we are back to Subway. It's, it's weird. I don't even know if they really do the five dollar sandwich thing because they used to be the big thing. Five dollar foot long, any foot long, except it would preface be like, well, all except for like five of our foot, of our foot long options. But yeah, out of the seventeen foot longs you get, five of them no. So it's not really any foot long. Um, but yeah, I don't know how you add double meat to a meatball sub. Like, it's pretty actually filled up. It's just, uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. And that was episode 113 of the Off and Beat podcast. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow on any podcast app. However the fuck you get around, grow the channel. One day, this is going to be a pod that is going to be top 50. And yeah, have a great day. Enjoy. I'll probably post this Saturday. You know what? Give Friday a break. I've already posted three this week. Give you guys a Saturday pod, you know? I kind of like dropping those weekend ones once in a while. So it's on my head of the curve. I'm cool with it. All right, guys. 
Have a great day, and don't forget, most importantly, suck some titties. And that's that shit. That was fucking awful. God damn it, Clint. I really, I really. I was disappointed. I really thought the house sitting one had some merit.